My name is Braden Benedict. I'm a sophomore in high school at Palos Verdes Peninsula High School uh, near Los Angeles. And we're here today at the Googleplex in Mountain View, California. It's just a really cool place. Um, there, every day, these Google Doodlers dream up new ideas to put on the Google homepage. Um, and we're actually going to get the opportunity to meet some of those Doodlers and also engineers who do this for a living every day. Uh, and as you all know, we're here because of an, an amazing opportunity for a K through 12 student to be actually have their work featured on the Google homepage. So without further ado, we're going to roll the tape on the Doodle for Google competition. Doodle for Google is basically our favorite time of year as Doodlers. <laughs> I think this is an amazing competition to show that there are infinite possibilities for kids to do whatever they want. If you could travel back in time, where would you go? Well, Google asked students throughout the country that question. A high school junior from Springfield, Oregon is in the running this morning for the Doodle for Google contest. Now Conda's artwork is going up against winners from 49 other states. He learned the news at a surprise assembly. Today, 11-year-old Eileen Powell of Alexandria learned that she will represent all of Virginia. Wow. children's book author you tour through schools all over the country and stuff and sometimes I get a little worried that art isn't as encouraged as much as it could be but to see the outpouring of entries that you guys got I was very much reassured it was really awesome this year's winner was Dylan Hoffman from Caledonia Wisconsin for his doodle pirate times
We also worked with the New York Public Library to create a public exhibition of the state winner's work. Drawing is a form of empathy, drawing is a form of communication, and more importantly, it's just fun. It starts with just an idea, a little doodle, and it can become something so much bigger than that. Doodle for Google. We're lucky enough to have Ryan, the guy from the video, right here with us today, and Corey, who's an engineer for Google. Um, you can ask Ryan and Corey questions uh, by typing them into the question box on the right side of your player window. And also, if you're on Twitter, please comment and ask questions using the hashtag doodle for Google. Google. That's doodle, the number four, and then Google. Uh, so Ryan, why don't you start off, tell us about yourself, what you did in school, and what your job is now. Uh, sure. So I lead the Doodle team. We've got about a dozen or so folks that work on this, uh, engineers and illustrators. And um, this is Cleo, my puppy, who I bring to work now and again. I grew up uh, in, in Indiana, so if anybody watching from Indiana, hello there. I uh, went to art school, um, studied creative writing and illustration, and, um, and have been making Doodles at Google since about 2006. Um, so, Corey, uh, what, what is your background and how did you come here and how do you use your engineering background to kind of help with the doodling? I grew up in Northern California, started at Google a number of years ago and uh, saw what the Google Doodle team was doing and they were just doing amazing animated, just interactive great things like the Pac-Man Doodle and I wanted to join in so now I get to make interactive and animated doodles with them. Awesome, those, those, are, the, those are the fun ones. Um, so this is a really cool space. I don't know if you want to show us around. Uh, sure, we can take you on a little tour. Do you mind taking Cleo? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Corey. Here's a leash. She starts barking when we have the treats. Okay. <laughs> All right, so as Braden mentioned, thank you, Braden, uh, we heard the Googleplex, and this is what we call Doodle Land, a little subsection of the Googleplex. Uh, it's a place that we try to make as creative as possible and all the engineers and illustrators are all mixed together for as much collaboration as possible. Uh, here we have one of our artists, Sophia. Oh, what are you up to, Sophia? Making comics for inspiration. Great, so we have a little bit of a, a reading nook here. You can hang out and just sort of get some time away from all the hustle and bustle. Um, one other interesting uh, place in the doodle land is our wall of Google. Uh, as you guys know, for a living, we create you know, different representations of the Google logo. And there was actually a company-wide contest to do the same thing. Um, and a bunch of our artists uh, made different paintings and sculptures and such. It's a nice one about the weather, I suppose. Um, these are all things that start with the letter O in this guy. Got an oboe and octopus. And Michael, you'll meet a little later, did that one. This used to be a working clock. I think the battery ran out. But you know, if you guys, what time is it? Something like that. Um, this, this is one that uh, I made out of just junk I'd been collecting, my favorite green things. A few of them I had to spray paint with this walrus here. Uh, and Jennifer, one of our doodlers, made this nice sewing motif and a, a sculpture. Um, unfortunately, with the contest of the wall of Google, we were disqualified because we're actually professional artists. But we got an honorable mention for our work, and we like to think of it as a nice place to visit when you come by. Um, we have uh, doodlers up and down the wall here. There's, like I mentioned, about a dozen of us. We have lots of inspiration, um, books and things that we, we refer to often. Um, we have also some real live doodlers doing some work that we want to introduce you to. So coming over this way, we've got Betsy. Um, Betsy's working on a, what we call a, a Wacom Cintiq monitor. It's one of our fancier devices. And it's actually a pen that you can draw directly onto the screen. Um, Betsy, you want to talk a little bit about how it works and why you like working this way? Yeah, um, so a Cintiq is, it's not really any different than drawing on paper. Um, except that you're drawing directly into like Photoshop or like a digital drawing and painting program. And I like working on a Cintiq because it's really immediate for me and I can work quickly and if I make a mistake I can literally just kind of go in and be like, oh, it's all gone, no more mistakes. Um, and I can choose any color I want because I have limitless possibilities and I think it's really fun and that's why I like working on it. Cool. Uh, so we. So with Doodles, we try to get a, you know, a, a reason to celebrate. It could be a holiday or somebody's birthday or some other kind of special event. 
and we try to solve that creative challenge with you know the most interesting and exciting way we can. Um, so you saw Betsy working on a computer, but Mike is another one of our doodlers, and he's a little bit more old school. He works on a computer as well, but oftentimes he'll start his process or work directly with uh, watercolor or pencil or whatever. Do you want to talk a little bit about your favorite process? Yeah. Uh, well, I actually enjoy uh, working traditionally or with uh, with real materials, um, just for the. Uh, actually because of digital's advantage, which is where in digital you can kind of clean up your mistakes. I actually really enjoy having the mistakes show in the final product. It kind of gives it a sense of spontaneity and just makes it fun and, and uh, it encourages me to, to just take risks and, and mess up and, and be okay with it. That's awesome. So, you know, as you can see, there's any number of ways you can solve a challenge. We've done doodles for photographers. We did a doodle where we actually had the Muppets from Sesame Street standing up. We've done uh, doodles that were video games like Pac-Man or the Zamboni doodle. And um, one cool thing is that Google, besides artists and engineers, we have all kinds of support people and people to help out with the process that, um, that, you know, make what we do more exciting. And one such person is Leah. Hi, Leah. How are you? Good. How are you? So Leah's not technically an artist, but she helps us with doodles and she helps us manage our, you know, keep our all of the doodles we're doing in order. And she's also managing the Doodle for Google competition, which we'll, you've heard about a little bit. You heard about a little bit more. And uh, tell us about what you're doing on the whiteboard here. So I'm not actually a trained artist, um, but loved art growing up. And what I'm doing here is what the team does a lot of the time is just brainstorming and drawing and doodling on the board. So. Whiteboards are great because like in a collaborative situation, in a meeting, like someone can have an idea and just start scribbling really fast. And the important part is just communicating like what is your concept. Um, and then from there you can like, you know, go into the specifics of like, you know, should it be animated? Should it be an illustration? Should I use watercolor? But everything really starts with a simple sketch and it's something that all of you have probably done a million times and it's really just, you know, a process to like to refine it from there. Um, so Braden, this is your first time in Doodle Land, first time in the Googleplex. Yes. Do you want to you got any questions for us? What do you want to know? Well, I do think we have some questions coming in. And just a reminder to everyone watching, you can um, uh, submit questions uh, using hashtag doodle for google um, So here's the first one. We have Guinness from Edgeworth, Pennsylvania. And they're asking, are you inspired by a particular artist? So I think, you know, one thing that is important as a creative person is to, like, see inspiration all over the place. Like, you know, with the particular doodles we do, for instance, like, Mike did this doodle for Cezanne, so that's actually an oil painting that Mike made, and so he's obviously very inspired by that particular artist. Or there's other art doodles like this one for Gustav Klimt that um, our jeweler Jennifer made, and she painted it for real. This is not real gold, but it's like real fake gold. Um, and, um, you know, so sometimes there's a literal translation, like we're inspired, like you have an assignment. Uh, but other times we're celebrating things like, uh, you know, Robert Bunsen, who if any of you have a biology class today, or chemistry class rather, you might come up with uh, using a Bunsen burner. And, um, you know, in that sense, like, we're inspired just by the things we're celebrating and finding a creative way to celebrate that on our logo. That's really cool. Um, so now Lisa from Estelle Elementary in Louisiana wants to know, did you ever get in trouble when you were in school for doodling in class? That's a good question, Lisa. I, so I actually stayed out of trouble by doodling in class. Um, you know, I was sort of like a hyperactive kid, you know, had lots of ideas, talked a lot. And the teachers would actually allow me to, you know, get out of class early if I finished my work and go to the art, what we call the art loft in my school. And I'd be able to like, draw and paint. And that was awesome because, you know, that made me, like, focused to get my studies done and do a good job because it actually opened up all these other opportunities. And eventually, you know, that opened up the opportunity to work at Google. That's, that's really cool. Um, so now Kristen from Ohio uh, wants to know how you actually come up with an idea to doodle. Okay, good question, Kristen. Um, so Google's a big company, and right. there's actually um, offices all over the world. And we do doodles not just for the United States, but the same team does doodles for countries, you know, everywhere. And so we have a big list of people who contribute ideas. So we'll have, like, a person in Singapore who has an idea for a holiday that happens there, or a person in, in Mexico, or, or wherever. Uh, and also from the team, or Googlers anywhere, and even users can submit ideas. And then from there, we take that big list and we say, like, well, with our small team, how many can we get done and do really well? And then we look at that individual situation, that individual creative opportunity, and we say, like, what's the most exciting way we can make it happen? Um, yeah. Um, so Madison from Norfolk, Virginia, is now asking, do you ever get stuck on what to draw? So. So I personally, like, my gift is that I, I can ramble on with ideas forever and ever, right? But um, what's more challenging to me is not getting stuck on what to draw. It's really just having the discipline to, like, get an idea and follow through. So you can kind of, you know, you know, wh who knows where ideas come from? They're just sort of like, you know, for me, the, you know, like, I think they're just like a lightning bolt of inspiration. Don't, I don't pretend to understand. Um, but 
flexing that muscle um, then becomes just the beginning. And then once you have that idea, it really takes a lot of like, you know, it's not a word you want to use. Like students might not like it, but you got to kind of like do your homework and you got to do your and do your, do your you know you know they say like one percent inspiration, ninety nine percent perspiration. It's really true. Like to make something really awesome, it really takes discipline to take that time and and do the work correctly. That's the challenge I have the most. Cool. So uh, this is gonna be our last question for right now. All right. And this is Julie from Treetop School in Texas. Okay. And she is wondering what is your favorite doodle that you've ever created. So I. I think if you ask any of the doodlers what their favorite doodle is, it's probably the doodle they're working on right now. Like doodles are kind of like your your babies, and you love all of them for different reasons, but you're particularly attached to the one that you're like you know you're focused on in the moment. Um, uh, that said, taking a step back, I mean, I've had an opportunity to work on some really awesome doodles, and I've been, you know, feel really lucky to, to have done that. But the doodles were like um, the Les Paul guitar or the Moog synthesizer that allowed other people to be creative, and allowed the internet just to make you know tons of songs and share them with friends. That was really exciting for me because that was, you know, I was able to, you know, like those people, Les Paul or Robert Moog, who actually created instruments, be part of the process that built a tool that allowed other people to be creative. Yeah, awesome. And speaking of creativity, we're now going to be having what's called a doodle-off between right. the three doodle doodlers we just introduced. And everyone watching has had the opportunity to vote on a topic for them to doodle. And the winning topic is, if I weren't a doodler... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I hold you up? I want to explain the rules first because I don't want these guys to have too much time to think of it. That's a good idea. So here's what we'll do. So I'll walk you through it. Um, the important part about a doodle off is the spontaneity. Right. And how people, uh, the doodlers, the creative folks here, um, are going to have just that moment to think of something cool. So um, what we're going to do is we're basically, as Braden mentioned, get a topic. And we're going to let these folks have a topic. They get two minutes to draw that topic. Now two minutes is not a lot of time. We have some professional artists here and some aspiring professional artists here. Um, and that's gonna, you're going to be able to address that topic to the best of your ability. Um, where the fun really begins is then you get 30 seconds to explain your topic and try to, try to present your topic as you know, the best possible solution for the, the opportunity at hand. Um, Betsy's going to work on her trusty Cintiq monitor. Mike is going to go old school and just we've got some brushes over here, very exciting. And Leah is going to go for the tried and true method of a whiteboard. Um, now, uh, I'm curious, can you tell these folks what they're about to draw? Big moment. So, the topic is, if I weren't a doodler, I would be. Okay, very Ready? good. Begin. All right, two minutes, so pressure's on. Um, we can sort of see different techniques. Every artist has their own way. There's no right or wrong answer. So, Betsy's going in with some light lines, just throwing in a few different, uh, she's got some, maybe some flowers or something. She's, it looks like she's using a very kinetic approach, a lot of lines, a lot of movement. Starting light, spelling out Google, getting in composition, and you can tell she's aware that two minutes is not a lot of time. She is flying. All right, let's take a look at what Mike's doing. Wow, okay, Mike's really gone into it. Straight into color, uh, taking a different approach than Betsy. He's going with a little more of a sketch approach. You know, Mike, Mike's a seasoned doodler, been doing this for years, um, probably is realizing the power of color and what he can get done. So let's, let's see. Like, he's also working in a very unforgiving medium. If you guys have ever used watercolor before, you drip something, you know, it's there to stay. So, bold choice on Mike's part. Got to make sure to spell the Google logo correctly. That's always a challenge. And let's come back to him a minute and see how he's going to integrate those letters. We're just about, about at one minute right now. All right. Halfway, Halfway point. Okay, great. So, Leah, uh, so Leah's got an interesting technique over here. Let's see what she's got. So, she's already out of the box, you know, trying some different techniques. You can see that she's varied quite significantly from the O's. We have a couple mountains there. I'm not sure, maybe that's a palm tree, could be a Roman candle exploding, mm -hmm. a squid. We're not really sure. We're going to have to maybe tune back in for the explanation. Um, you know, interestingly, she's only a few letters in. Time is tight. She's going to have to figure out what to do with that G and that E. That's one of the big challenges of Doodle. When you're at home doing the Doodle for Google competition, know that your major points for a really interesting integration for letters. How are we doing on time, Braden? We're just under 30 seconds. Okay. All right. We've got a little blotch on Mike's part. We're not going to be too strict about, you know, perfection. This is really just about getting a concept down, defending that concept. We'll have a brief time for cross-examination. Let's tune back in with Betsy. All right, so Betsy started with her color. You can see that even though she's using this computer, there's a really cool texture on her brush. Betsy's like the brush master. <laughs> she's done some really beautiful um, work already. If you guys saw the Mary Leakey doodle, um, that's all Betsy's work. Time is now up. All right, time is up. How are you guys doing? Okay, looks a little rough. We're gonna do. We're gonna grant an extension of 30. Can we do a 30 second extension for these guys? Okay. 30 seconds. The judges say yes. We're gonna give them a little bit more time. Okay, we get some time to develop those concepts. And Leah's. All right. 
Leah's put in some some more uh, letters here. That's good. See what she's going to have to she's going to have some explaining to do. Um, but I like what I see. You can come back and see Mike has done a really great job integrating some of the letters here, uh, the backpack, uh, um, some sort of camping trip going on, and also you know spreading out some of his green colors, uh, making a nice even composition, kind of guide your eye around. Um, it will be 30 seconds That's already. 30 that seconds. is time. That is time. Time is up. Wow, a lot of interesting things going on. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hard sell. I think because Mike got a jump on color, I feel like he's in a pretty good position. Mike, do you feel ready to give us a 30 second explanation of what you got going on here? Very sloppy color, but uh, yeah, I guess if I wasn't doodling, I would be out wandering the wilderness somewhere. Um, yeah, it's, we spend a lot of time in the office, but uh, um, which is great, but uh, we also get a chance to go outside and explore and just be inspired. Uh, Ryan was talking a little bit about things that inspire us when we're at work, and I think it's also important to be inspired outside. Uh, so if I wasn't doodling, um, even if it wasn't my everyday job, I would find a way to make hiking around the world my full-time job. It's just saying very good. I, I so I'll say, Mike, right off the bat, I liked your you know like your approach where you thought about it like what you'd like to be doing just like in general. Um, that's very you know interesting. So, a man uh, uh, on a solo mission. That's also interesting. Paint some of the psychological portrait of you know where you know Mike taking you know Mike kind of getting away from it all. Uh, question for you: um, Could you tell me like what is your use of the the red and yellow here? What are you what are you trying to accomplish? <laughs> um, well, it's trying to trying to keep it true to the color uh, color scheme of the Google logo okay, okay. Uh, just to uh, to sort of keep Google relevant to the overall uh, aesthetic here uh, that even if I wasn't doodling Google is still on my mind um, but uh, also just to see really scenic places very colorful uh, vibrant vibrant lands landscapes uh, things you may not even have known existed like hills completely covered in uh, this unnatural red pretty cool. great pretty great for, for two and a half minutes I also want to point out I would say Mike Stoodle passes what we call the squint test, which is if you kind of just look at it, squinting your eyes, it actually still says Google. Pretty nice, pretty nice thing to accomplish in just a short amount of time. Well done, Mike. Uh, let's let's hop over to uh, Leah for a second. And uh, so Leah. Yes. Um, well, but first of all, I'd like to congratulate you for using all of the marker colors at your disposal. You didn't have a full palette as Mike did, but used the medium very well. Uh, black, red, green, and blue, all incorporated here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what your doodles uh, are yeah. trying to show? Yeah, so if I weren't on the doodle team, I would want to be um, a travel writer. So as you can see, the G is the writing. And then here's the mountains, the two O's, uh, a beach scene, the Eiffel Tower, so traveling to a city, and then a plane taking off, and that will be your last D. So um, we have two doodles here with mountains as O's. Was there any kind of copying going on? Is there something I need to know? <laughs> We're just oh, in man, summer. I couldn't see you. My back was to you. I may have seen you warming up earlier. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. All right, so, you know, ideas flow back and forth. That's okay. What, can you explain, what, what, I'm sorry, what is this thing again? This would be the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Okay. And so sometimes we use reference material to sort of get an idea of what the Eiffel Tower would look like. But other times you can just kind of go from your head and just go there. Yep. Sure, why not? Have you ever been to Paris? I have. Fantastic. It well, looks exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, fantastic. I think there's a nice use of scale here. We've got a page, we've got mountains. That slope of the hill goes really nicely into the, <laughs> into the tropic paradise. Uh, interestingly, the wind is pushing the leaves this way, but pushing the wave that way. You can sense a lot of tension and excitement <laughs> in the composition. And of course, we have the Eiffel Tower, Leah's interpretation of it. She's seen it in person. I have not. I'm not going to criticize there. And we have our spaceship, a nice use of the form of the E. Very, very well done. Thank you. So finally, we have Betsy. Betsy was aided by technology. She had I the com was. she had the computer. Betsy, do you want to give us a look at what you accomplished in two and a half minutes? Sure. Um, so I also went with the outdoorsy, travel-y theme, as apparently everyone did. Uh, but if I was not a doodler, I would want to go explore the rainforest and hang out with parrots and uh, go into like waterfalls and find topiary-shaped like Google letters. <laughs> I would say one thing I would one thing I would agree with is when you're a doodler and this is your full time job, you see Google everywhere. Every single thing that's out there, you try to reimagine as a Google logo. You know, you'll be in the shower with soap, and you'll see like, you know, like we never use soap in a doodle. Like I could, we could do that. Um, so 
Uh, one interesting choice, Betsy, is uh, you went with the person standing up in the O shape as opposed to maybe the more obvious L shape. Could you give us some understanding of what went through your mind when you were making that choice? Well, since I am the most important part of this illustration, wow, okay. I wanted to make myself at the beginning of the logo rather than the end. But if I replaced the G with myself, we might not recognize it as the word Google. So that's... Uh, yeah. That's my thinking on that one. Okay, great. And then it's, what is the relationship between these two birds? Are they friends? Is this bird going to perch on your uh, arm here um, next to next to the other bird? Are they going to replace one another? Is there a narrative that this, we should this understand? Is actually, um, this is actually a jealous bird, and he's angry that I'm hanging out with the dark blue bird, so wow. he's coming over to like knock him off my arm. So, so again, a, a psychological portrait. Right. And also, <laughs> green being the color of envy, the symbolism right. of the bird's color is coming into play. Very exactly. sophisticated, very sophisticated design here. Um, okay, fantastic. Well, there you have it. Those are our three entries for, for the doodles, or for the doodle off. Uh, Braden, what's going on next? It is now time for you guys to cast your vote on who you think should win the doodle off. Um, to the right side of your screen, you should find uh, a polling area where you can select which one you think is the best as a class. Um, now you've seen these guys in action, but now it's time to learn about the actual doodle for good Doodle for Google. It's a tongue twister. It is a very, yeah. Doodle for Google competition, and Ryan, I think, is going to tell us about that. Uh, sure. So, in, in essence, so what the Doodle for Google competition is, it's a scholarship competition that you're all, you're all eligible to participate in. And you take, you know, your imagination and do a Google logo. Uh, this year's theme is my best day ever. Uh, similarly open-ended, maybe you're going to go on a hilly journey, maybe you'll end up encountering a couple of jealous parrots. Um, <laughs> perhaps you're going to go to the Space Age Eiffel Tower. Um, and uh, we can't wait to see what you're going to do. The, the, this year you can actually in, apply online for the first time. You can also download an application from um, google.com slash doodle for number four Google. Um, deadline is March 22nd. Big prizes. The grand prize, of course, is getting your logo on the home page. There's also a scholarship for you of 30000 bucks. Wow. Uh, and a $50,000 technology grant for your school. Uh, and I believe actually we have a video to go into a little bit more depth. Awesome. Maybe marker. What is your best day ever? Um, maybe. I don't know, go to like the ice cream shop for dinner or something. I really like there to have a big ocean where soccer? Go roller skating. I love roller skating. Riding a giraffe with monkeys. Riding a Ferrari. First, I do a couple, like five or six arcade games. And I might even want to find new animals. I'll go to my grandma's with my monkey and my giraffe and ride on the roof with it. Going to the moon. Maybe some other plants? Yeah. Awesome day. Every year, we invite students from kindergarten through 12th grade to create their own doodle based on our logo. This year's Doodle for Google theme is My Best Day Ever. It's easy to enter. Just go to the Doodle for Google website, download the application, and get doodling. You can mail in entries or upload them directly to the site. The winning doodle will be featured on the Google homepage for millions of people to enjoy. So, what's your young artist's best day ever? We can't wait to find out. Cool, so that was Doodle for Google. Again, March 22nd is the deadline. The theme is my best day ever. And I think uh, now we get to take a few more questions. Yeah, I, those are awesome prizes, by the way, for that. Really cool. Um, so yeah, we do have some more questions. Uh, we have from Diane from Wheelersburg High in Ohio, and uh, they're wondering, is the doodle different in different places around the world? Uh, that's a great question. It, yeah, they are very different. So you can imagine, uh, you're in high school, Diane, in history class, Fourth of July doodle would not go over too well in England, for example. Uh, we don't run that there. But if you go to google.com slash doodles, you can actually see all 1,500 or so doodles we've ever done. Um, and we make uh, several hundred every year uh, around the globe. So uh, it could be a doodle for uh, any country, you name it. And um, we, fortunately at Google, we have such a, a, a wide diversity of folks um, in our offices around the world. We can you know, find somebody from Japan or find somebody from Russia to give us like, you know, sort of a consultation. And we have uh, 
uh, lots of excitement learning about new things. That's really cool. Uh, this is from Mrs. Harris in Pleasant View, Missouri. And as a professional doodler, what other skills do you use on a daily basis besides just drawing? Well, that's a great, that's a great question as well. So, um, you know, in school, I wanted to draw all the time, and that was really important. But, you know, all the subjects you're learning in school are actually really helpful. So, for instance, I got a double degree in writing, and writing helps me a lot when I email my team or email, like, you know, other folks to, like, collaborate on doodles, because being really clear with communication is, like, extremely important. I mean, also math. I mean, if you think about our engineers, like, you know, the magic that happens is really is a different kinds of math. Like, they make really cool stuff happen just by writing little equations um, that turn into massive programs that allow you to play Pac-Man or play a keyboard or see an animation, and some really terrific things you can learn from that subject as well. So now we have one from Diego from Edgeworth, Pennsylvania, and uh, he's asking, what is the hardest thing for you to draw? Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, a lot of good questions here. Thank you, guys. Um, so, you know, really, like, I, every time I start drawing a doodle, it's, for me, it's almost like I'm starting from scratch. Like, I, you know, you really, you know, I, you really don't have any shortcuts in drawing to do something really well. Um, you know, so, you know, starting from a blank page is always tough. Um, some things that are particularly hard that seem like they should be simple is like a bicycle, you know, it's just a couple of circles and a few lines, but honestly, like getting into perspective, getting all the spokes, when you really start paying attention and drawing from observation, you realize like how complex simple things are, you know, just like drawing a hand. There's so many knuckles and joints and, you know, different angles and planes on the hand, so like, you know, drawing from observation and trying to distill that into a, even a cartoon, you realize how complex the world is around right. us and a lot of challenges there. So this is from Kim in Savannah Oaks Middle School in Wisconsin. Uh, how do you decide on the theme for Doodle for Google? Uh, so this year was really this kind of special. So in addition to the contests and the prizes, actually the most fun part for the doodlers is actually having all the winners come to New York for the final event uh, in May. And we get to meet all, all of you, and we can see your, I mean, we've seen all your awesome drawings. It's really exciting to be part of that creative energy. And you know, one thing I'll say as an aside, like. What you guys do with creativity is like what we try to reproduce. Like, you know, like, please, as kids, like, don't ever forget that you can draw and you can dance and you can sing. And, like, you know, that is not a mystery. That's just like, that's just like being human. Uh, and it's awesome to be part of that in the event. And uh, this year, when we were thinking about the event, we thought, you know, like, how can we make the event the best day ever? And it was actually Mike um, who was like, that's it. That's the theme. You know, like, let's just make the theme the best day ever. And, you know, in our little small slice of the world, we try to, like, you know, make a best day ever for the, for the folks that enter and win this contest. Cool. So this is going to be our last question before we crown one of our winners mm -hmm. over here. Um, this is Mr. King's class from Ponderosa Elementary in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, and this class wants to know, what kind, what kind of superpower would you want and how would you use it for good? Well, I mean, I, you know, admire the classic superpowers like being able to fly or have x-ray vision. But honestly, the thing that the doodle job has is really shown me is that it's really an amazing thing to be able to um, make something that's both educational and entertaining. So being able to have the superpower, which I feel like we're lucky enough to have, to be able to make a piece of artwork that also in inspires curiosity. Um, you know, it could be about any particular topic, anything from like the Zamboni ice cleaning machine, uh, you know, to um, mitochondria, which we haven't done a doodle for, but you know, first thing that popped in my head. You know, like it's really fun to be curious and to be, to, to, to enjoy with a large group, like all that excitement. Um, so fortunately, I feel like we get to express something of a superpower every day. So what would your name be? Would it be like Super Doodler or Doodle Man or um, you got to pick one? Well, I'd have, first, I'd have to find if the domain name is available because you got to find a way to capitalize on the website. Um, <laughs> but it probably would involve Doodle in some way so, so, much, uh, so long as a copyright lawyer is a Google allow that to happen. Excellent. So mm. now we do have the winner uh, from this competition. <sighs> and it would be great if we could get a drum roll. Uh, from you three over there. Now their own drum roll. And the winner is Mike. Wow, <laughs> congratulations. You crown our winner. Mike, you get a shark hat, this being a Discovery Education and Shark Week being their greatest holiday of the year. Uh, you, look, Land Shark, um, you get to uh, wear this all day proudly. All uh, day. Acceptance speech? Uh, yes, uh, best, best day ever. <laughs> wow. There you have it. There you have it. Short and sweet, best ever. Oh, congratulations to the, the runners up and second runners up. Wonderful work. Uh, Jealous Bird, Eiffel Tower. We've got a lot of inspiration <laughs> in here. And we hope that's a little bit of a start to inspire you all. And we can't wait to see your entries are due to for Google. I just want to say thank you to the whole Google team for letting me come here and for letting everyone who's watching come kind of visit with you today. Um, 
reminder to everyone out there to enter the Doodle for Google competition. It's a great opportunity. You know, you might even make it onto the Google homepage. Um, and but before you go, we're going to kind of give you some inspiration by showing you some of the past winning Doodles. I, and I can't wait to see what all you come up with. Roll the tape. Thank you.